Simulation games are awesome. They stimulate the brain, make you strive for efficiency in design and execution, and are awesome for annihilating long stretches of otherwise tedious time. Say, a 24-hour bus ride to Orlando. I needed something to do other than watch The Princess Bride over and over again. Fortunately, the Game Boy Color came to my aid, offering unto me, well, hard labor. Tilling the ground, watering the plants, taking the cat out, and I just fell right into it. The original Harvest Moon was one of the last and greatest games to hit the Super NES, and interpretations on the same farm-managing gameplay soon made their way to the Game Boy and later the Game Boy Color. Though some key elements had to be removed, such as the townsfolk and all associated possibilities for marriage among them, the basic elements still remain. You're left in charge of a farm, you grow crops, you raise and deal in livestock, and after four seasons of 30 days each, your performance is assessed by the spirit of your dead grandfather. Fail to appease him, and your game is over. You start out with just your pet, some basic tools, and a farm overgrown with weeds, stumps, and rocky outcroppings. It's up to you to restore order to this sun-baked field of entropy. The time of day and your own physical limitations are your primary opponents, as it takes only a field of hoeing or a couple destroyed boulders to bring you to your knees. Too much physical exertion and you'll be rendered unable to act until you have a bite to eat, go to sleep, or take a dip in the hot spring conveniently located under your shed. Say hi to the gnomes, too. They'll run your farm in your absence if you ask them nicely. And feed them. Apparently they don't like the mushrooms that grow right next to them. If you're not abusing the gnomes, though, you'll be kept busy tending animals, watering plants, and doing the farm's other day-to-day -day upkeep. As you progress, improved items will be made available, such as a sprinkler for moistening larger areas, and sharper tools for ease of destruction. The downside, though, is that for as fun as this game is as a mental exercise, it's a horrible strain on the ears. You'll be hearing the same couple tracks over and over again as you go about your daily rounds, and those tracks really aren't even that good. Keep your music device of choice on hand and just feast your eyes and mind on this one. Fortunately, the Game Boy Color version features enough different hues to tell what's what, though the grid-based farm doesn't take lightly to folks walking on lines. You might get screwed out of three panels worth of whatever you're planting, so make sure you're centered. Though it's great on the go, you're not going to sit at home and play this version. Maybe the Super NES original or later offering since there's more to do and more to woo. And while the primitive sound and stripped back mechanics might be a little harsh by today's standards, the comforting routine is great for making large pieces of time disappear. You'll be in Orlando before you know it. <laughs> 